model analysis that we did before. Is there a way we, we can see where we are sitting money in the bank? More real time. You know, this is this is averaged over the year and everything, and, and uh, over a year, yes, it's more accurate than it is at any point in time. But your point in time is what's your bank balance? And you've got enough to clear the next check. And I assume that's built in here somewhere that if you don't write checks, you can't cover. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Yeah. That's something that. Because the bank balance does everything. Oh, okay. So we've got one checking account, is what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. Okay. In other words, we don't have a different checking account for every. We don't have a general fund checking account or a large fund checking account. Just so that masks some of our you know, fundamental yes, problems. Oh, yeah. But again, we got to make sure that we've got. Yeah. For me, knowing if we, you know, I looked in the water fund. I, I'm just playing with it in the water fund, and you know, we we uh, uh, we took in one hundred and six thousand nine hundred and fifty-two dollars and twenty-five cents. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of it's there. Glory. Let me get the water fund. Okay. Bring, bring the water operated. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. The actual quarter expenses were one hundred twenty-eight thousand six hundred and twelve dollars. That's okay. how much money went out. Wait a second. You can do it the transfer outs. Up to, right down there at the bottom. Yeah, 128 went out. And uh, once you take out the. And let me know, a lot less than that came in. So. 106 actually came in. Okay, now it's 107. $33,000 of that. Well, I understand the reasoning for it. Yeah. But what, what I'm saying is, you know, is, is, is if I look at these numbers that are printed here, I think everything's hunky dory. When in reality, we could be, you know, just that we could be in a case where we might want to pay more attention is all. Okay. You know, that, that's all I was going with this. Yeah. Yeah, because again, the interfund transfers are calculated in January. Well, so I understand that. Oh, I understand that. But, you know, I, I the, got a the question. Could we make interfund transfers spread out through the year? Yeah, you can. That one might be more realistic than I, I realize if you go. That doesn't make sense. It's arithmetic. It doesn't matter. It's arithmetic. Yeah. So in other words, so we can change it every quarter. We, we yeah. can transfer over every quarter. Yeah. And so yeah. At, at the end of the so for the for, when you do a 2012 budget, I mean that's the whole thing for 2012. Mm -hmm. You start off January 1 with the 2012 budget. Yeah. Does that mean we have to modify the budget January 1st? So you have a new budget, so you only transfer one quarter of the transfers to the no. transfer. Yeah. No, I, I just do the mental arithmetic, you know, that it's first quarter, so we should, you know, one quarter of the year yeah. should be 25%. But what and happens is a big, a big expenditure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no. Let's, let's go back to this. But that wasn't my point, Joe. Oh. My point was, is we record total revenues of $685,137.82. Wait a second. This is yeah, okay. That's okay. correct. Cool. Okay, well, that's total funds available. For the whole Actual year. revenue? No. No, that's that. That's 106. Is what we really took in in cash was 106,952 dollars. And you add that to the beginning fund balance, and then you come up with the 685. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, I hate this format, but that's the way it works. Well, um, it might have changed. I think oh. we need to know how much actual income we get in a quarter. Okay. Period. Uh, and then compare that to the expenses. Then we can understand why it doesn't matter. Yeah, I've yeah, this, this, all these years I've done that with a pencil. Uh, <laughs> now, question: Can you modify bias so that it does that? Only by taking it to itself. It doesn't. It's 
an uncapable. Can you make a phone call to the guys at Spokane and say, we're out of dark space? <laughs> So yeah. why can't we so, do that? Yeah, do we have the facility to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you export it to Excel. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and again, but when she exports it to Excel, then she has to go. Well, it's no longer things. official as soon as you put it in Excel. Yeah, well. Because they made Yeah. <laughs> so maybe what you said, you spend all your time doing yeah, this, is you just put it to Excel because it comes out yeah, sort of yeah, garbage, right? I mean, you don't do some right. You can format. Well, well, that depends if the export works okay. The export looks exactly like this without the addition. So it doesn't give you the total. You have to go in and put it. Now you then you have to go put all your formula, formulas in. Yeah. Yes, it is. And that's what I've used in the past. I've taken that and just stripped out a bunch of stuff and created my own budget for it. And uh, because I put it in a manner that I could understand what was going on with that. Well, maybe then what we can have is a printout. And then, more be so kind, it's just to actually sum it up manually and write it on the original copy. So we don't have to do the arithmetic. I, I would appreciate it. And I think it would help all, you know, it keeps us, to me, that way you can track the things Well, I'm pretty, I've already put it into Excel and created all the formulas. So I don't Yeah, it's teasing, I, I already did that, um, but it, it just wasn't ready for tonight. Yeah, you're going to be validated, of course, too, and, and we'll be and it changes every day. She gets more receipts, and especially with the water. Yeah. Every time she gets more receipts. Okay, so we're going to need to re review this again at the next council meeting. So you can have the Excel version of the next council meeting. So that needs to be adjusted up and back in here. The insurance and the general fund needs to be adjusted down. Let me find that insurance. And this, that one goes up 10, this one goes down 10. Okay. So then if, if you're doing it in Excel, then, then you can, you can uh, conditionally format it to red, green, or red, blue, or whatever, that kind of stuff. Very cool. <laughs> well, it does, does take time. You do have to figure out what to do. Well, I have to relearn these things. I don't know if you know them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, that's... Anything else in here? We go? We're about to... About mid-year, we will have closed out the uh, and stormwater fund. You can see that uh, our income was 2,000 around it was 4851. So that's we've got to really get on the state next next time on this. And how we do on recycling? We raise the race and see how we do it this quarter. Four. Six, we're doing five this quarter. Okay. All right. We'll do this. So, 
you want to have, uh, you guys want the Excel version of the next council meeting? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we need that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I need to tie things up with the questions when there might be. I've done the Excel thing, you have the same questions. I mean, it just it does some addition for you. This was done. So. And like I said, I, my, my, I, I took it one year and I arranged it by function instead of goes in mm -hmm. and goes out of. Mm -hmm. I, I put it by macro functions, law enforcement, uh, salaries mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And it gave me a much better feel of what was actually happening. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, from industry, I'd like to see an actual career chart of where the actual money go, or, or just a circular diagram, perhaps. It's just where all the money go. But sometimes I think we spend a lot of time on something that might be two or three thousand dollars, and the real issue is something twenty or thirty thousand. You know, and I don't know how to balance that yet. You know. The biggest problem I've found with with this accounting system, okay, uh, or, which is I found with all like, automated accounting systems is you go in and you spend $500 in gasoline. Well, some of the gasoline goes to the yeah. gas over here, goes down there, um, this goes to the sofa. Can I say something? Yes. Um, this month, the third, fourth Thursday, the 26th, um, I have my finance and uh, so much kind of clerks and finance officers meeting and I would strongly encourage at least one council member to come with me because it's the change in the bars accounting system and it would help someone to be more um, knowledgeable of how the system's changing because this format's not going to be the same format in a couple of years because of the way the state's requiring us to do our bar system. Sounds like if you could get Ken to go, you'd be improved on it. That's why I'm looking at Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to take lots of bodos. Yeah, it's about an hour and a half meeting. But they, so what day is it on? Thursday, 26? Okay, uh, what time? Um, it starts at 12. And it's usually over by 1.30. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to put in here <laughs> call Laura. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any of you who want to do a little prep there, we have the three inch, three ring binder full of rules for bars. Yeah, but bars that's changing. Bar, uh, it's, um, <laughs> it's, There's a term out there somewhere. Yeah, it's, 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 it's how the state says you're to track money. It's the accounting. I'm sure there's a TLA, two letter acronym. <laughs> accounting, budget, accounting. <laughs> All right, any other questions on the review? What comes out of it is that Laura will uh, come up with the new Excel version for the next time. And Start working off that as opposed to the straight uh, bias uh, report. Okay. You're looking at it. Yeah. Um, I didn't write them down. I should have. W weren't there a couple typos in this budget? I would expect so, yeah. I've got a I mean, that, that we pointed out. Okay. I didn't see any no really typo. Couple of areas we need to read. Budget. I guess as long yeah. as the decimal points are in the right spot, we're okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought you talked about that this. That makes me appropriate. Yeah. No, no, got to, yeah. We know we've got to make some adjustments. Switching to over formats will help, just because it's going to be in a different looking format. And you know, if we have the red green thing, you know, that will help us. Unfortunately, we're amateurs, right? Still going to be 28 pages long. <laughs> okay, we're, we're past this. We're ready for voucher approval. Would you please? Well, you can't record it. So well, we're recording right here as long as you speak loudly enough. Okay. Um, I'm Dorothy Crochon, and I'm with the Finance Committee. 
Uh, we met Monday. We had about 20 vouchers. Um, during that time, Ken Ware um, usually sets with a budget, and we do um, any expenditures, we do go through and we buy an item on there. Um, so it's, it's pretty thorough now where it hasn't been in the past, but there wasn't any problems with any warrants. So do we make a motion? Then? Yeah, I have to make the motion. So I'll make a motion that we approve payroll vouchers 5070 through 5085 in the amount of 25,213.72. I'll make a motion we approve the 2012 vouchers numbers 17179 through 17194 in the amount of 75,144.21 for a grand total of $100,357.93. I'll second. Any further to any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay, we're now down to citizen comments. Any citizen comments? Mr. Coleman. Green Coleman, 203 19th Street. Now, um, we'd like to talk about two or three little items. The, the rice road roundabout. Um, originally, when they scheduled us, the uh, one lane closure, it would wind up with the school being out on spring vacation. And at the very last minute, uh, it was not decided to reschedule it for one week later. And the school people had cut out, you know. And I have been in discussion with Lieutenant Grant about this. And in fact, I sent him an email with a CC to uh, Chaplin, who was the superintendent, and he resp uh, the lieutenant responded and asked the, uh, the, the superintendent to get in contact with him, and has not yet. Uh, some people are concerned that their kids are going to be standing out there in the rain for 90 minutes. The lieutenant says that most likely WSDOT has figured for the worst case scenario, and it's not likely to be the worst case, and they in fact got on board last night with some dry weather and started pouring concrete in the middle. You may have noticed that, okay? And that will help a little bit to alleviate things. The lieutenant still hopes to get in contact with the superintendent about this, and he says what they probably will do is stage buses so that they go all out on the highway at the same time, like they used to do when they didn't have traffic light and something. And you make sure that there's not going to be a problem. Uh, the computers in the sheriff's office here are having a little bit of a problem along with yours. You know that. You know, I've heard, heard something about it. And uh, I do the crime pin maps, and crime is creeping upwards a little bit. And also in discussion with the lieutenant about that, he says, do you think that uh, the uh, people who attended their meeting in Sultan last month uh, said, well, we'll show you, you know, and went out and made the crime go up and she said you're dealing with reported crime, not actual, actual crime, because it, as far as they're concerned, if you don't report it, it's not a crime. They emphasized at that meeting that very point. So people may be reporting more crime than they were before, hopefully. But there have been a small spate of stolen vehicles in Salt. There's been four of them in the month of March, three of them the 26th and 29th, and that was covered in an email that I sent out to you all. I think there's been one stolen vehicle recently in Gold Bar, but uh, the Gold Bar region, the crime is just pretty modest, or what's being reported has been pretty modest in any kind of itself. The other thing I'd like to talk about is the tires in the creek, which you brought to my attention, the mayor brought to my attention. And uh, there's a lady who uh, lives on First Street, has a First Street address. She lives a couple houses down on the creek. And she's been finding tires in the creek. And I looked into this a little bit. And uh, King County, for instance, uh, they have a recycling thing through Rebanco, and it costs like $10 a tire to, to get rid of a tire. You know, So it's not really going to be a cheap thing. I did send an email to uh, Snohomish County Public Works and they responded to me and said, 
that this should be addressed through the Snohomish, Snohomish Health District and uh, somebody would be contacting me. Uh, I printed a PDF that I gave you about uh, an illegal uh, garbage dumping. It's a little folder, brochure, right there. And uh, there's some uh, ability of getting a grant, but that grant is only for reducing the cost of you getting uh, items uh, through the dump, you know. They'll give you reduced rates. And of course, there's a lot of people not interested in reduced rates, they're interested in free rates. So, but anyway, maybe uh, you can get somebody on your council to get on board with this too. You know, I, know, I know your response to the lady is that there's no money for uh, handling some of this sort of thing. But, and I'm sure that that woman doesn't want to go paying 10 bucks for every tire she pulls out of the creek and besides which she says she's about 104 pounds soaking wet and doesn't have the equipment to do that. So, you know, anyway, uh, between myself and Pat Tobin, we'll probably pay a little attention to it. And if that woman needs some help getting tires out, we'll get them out. Might end up in, the, in your compound over here until we can find a way to get rid of them. Uh, Ray, two things. Uh, I believe I seen you down here on the highway the other day. Yes, Pat. Pick up. Yep. There too. So mm -hmm. thanks for doing that. Number two, um, the Rice Road roundabout. Is it? They're going to be 90 minute shutdowns both ways, 24/7. No, 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 no. The single okay. way closures. That's what somebody had told me last night. I said I don't think so, but it should be single lane closures and and. The point of it is, is that there may be as much as a 90-minute delay for right. some people going the other way while that single lane is going this way, and that probably has to do with the work that they have to accomplish. Right. But that is a worst-case scenario too, okay. and hopefully that's going to be drastically minimized. And of course, you all know how to get around it, right? Kellogg's Kellogg Road. Road. Yeah. Everybody knows how to get up from Kellogg Road and down. Salton Basin Road, and I got uh, what for from Denise for letting that one out. <laughs> well, and, and I, Bob already checked that out and he timed it. And Bob said when he went up Kellogg and came down Salton Basin, it only added 17 minutes 17. to a normal commute. To a normal commute. Right. So it's not bad. Yes, I've been there. It, it adds a little bit. But I'm I mean, still going to have to leave it. You know, you're shooting crafts whether you want to do 17 minutes. Yeah. Or yep. take a chance on getting caught in traffic. If you I'll have, still be leaving the house. If, if you have an accident on the highway with a two hour closure, you're darn sure going to take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, one of the block watch people in, in uh, Sultan had commented about you know publicizing that. And uh, WizDOT doesn't want to uh, detour right. general traffic that way because they know that the locals are going to do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, <coughs> They're not gonna they're not gonna send big rigs up that road. So but you also have to be close enough in the backup to get to Kelmont Lake Road. Yeah. Well, well if it was the ninety minute backup, you're not gonna get there. Yeah, if the backup was long enough, you know, you're not gonna be able to cut across the lane, you know. Yeah. Although generally when you come onto the highway, you know, you hear go on when we have backups, people are they're, they're pretty good. They'll let you in if they know that you're going to go that way and not get in front of them. You know, so. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a comment to make about the tires. Yes. Um, I don't think that you can stop now that as far as the fisheries go, you're not supposed to fool with the streams at all. Yeah, that, I was reading the, the emails that got in. That's where we go to the Department of Health. It's usually fish and wildlife so it is show fish and up wildlife. And, and, and claim it. And, uh, so the fact that they're taking them out and dumping them on you. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's, it's more of the 10,000 rules. I mean, if a tree even goes down, they don't want you taking it out. Yeah. When the creek's high, they don't want people drowning in it either, so. I don't think they care. <laughs> Well, if you're not a fish, you're not a salmon. As long as they stay out of their canoe. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And uh, we'll have to check and see how many tires that the, the uh, soap place will take. 
uh, for free or how much they charge. And <coughs> would you pay a dollar a tire if you get new tires for, re for recycling? I thought that was what it was. Maybe three dollars. Maybe three dollars? Yeah. There is recycling. Yeah. I had one thought of speaking to Les Schwab about will they take these tires if we give them a small fee, you know? All right, well, any more comments? I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. All in favor? Second. Oh, I need a second. 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 Okay, any discussion? All in favor? All right, thank you.